Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of, I was about to say Design Recharge. It used to be called Design Recharge, but now it's called Creatives Ignite. And um, uh, Mario was one of the people who helped me to do the rethinking about the name. And we, I agree that Creatives Ignite is definitely more clearer. So anyway, I'm glad everybody's saying hey in the chat. If you're not joining us live, just so you know, you can always join us live. And I'm joined today by my friend Mario. He's going to say his last name because I've known him for since 2018 and I've always said it wrong. He never told me until recently that I was saying it wrong. So I don't say it anymore. I can spell it fast though. Just tell him how to tell him who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Mario Quesada. Uh, I am a brand strategist and content developer for nonprofits and mission-based companies and personal brands. Um, and I am currently in Hawaii. Where in Hawaii today? Uh, today I'm in Kaneohe, which is, uh, I'm at my mom's house today. because Wednesday mornings, I usually have my kids. So, hey, Tate. Okay, cool. Okay. But today we're going to talk about process. So Mario and I meet every week and Mario, we were talking about, we, I was trying to get ready for taxes. My mom's going to be like, oh, great. Here we go. So I waited until October to do my our taxes. So John, my husband has his own business and I have my own business and it takes a long time and I'm like, not again. So I was like, Mario, I'm going to use Notion. And Amy Lynn, who's here from Napa, California, she was like, oh, my goodness, I love Notion. And she has helped me a lot. And Mario's helped me. And I'm sure I need more help. But Mario and I have this conversation. And this is why I wanted to have this. I really felt like um, process was something that I really wanted to uh, talk about from here until December. And I was like, when he said this to me, I was like, at first, it was like the little kid in me that was like, I am not cool. I am not doing it right. Because here's what it was. I, I I know you don't even know where. So I didn't tell him about the story that I had in my head about what he had said or what, what ha happened. It was really fast because everything's fast in my head. So <clears throat> what happened was I'm like, okay, I'm going to use Notion to do my taxes. And I had watched a couple of videos and my friend Amy Lynn had helped me some. And Mario does a lot of stuff in Notion. So I was like, hey what do you think about this? And he's like, Diane, why don't you just use a template? And I was like, whoa. He's like, why do you do that? You always start from scratch. I think he's thinking about how I build websites or, you know, everything. Like I start from scratch. Do you remember this? Yeah, I do. Okay. So the conversation I was thinking Mario was having in his head in my head um, was you're a dummy, Diane, that you're not just, I know you're not, I know that wasn't what you were thinking, but that is like that old story of like, oh crap, I'm not enough. I'm not doing it right. Right. But I realized it was just Mario. I know he loves me and I, he's only just wanting the best, but we are different. Um, we are just different. And I was like, oh no. And he asked me this question. He said, why don't you just use a template? Why don't you just go get a template from somebody, right? Do you want to tell them? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically what you're saying. I <clears throat> I asked her, why didn't you just find a template that does exactly what you needed to do and start there because someone else has already worked out all the hard things that you're you're trying to make happen. And my heart behind it was you're you're making it much harder on yourself and you take so much longer to get to where you want to get to, to solve the problem that you're trying to solve that 20,000 people have solved already in, in templates, in template form somewhere. And my question was, why don't you use a template to kind of catapult you towards your finish line faster, but that's not the way Diane's brain works. So I obviously offended her. No, no, you didn't offend like me. No, but that if I could have gone to that place and been like, I'm not enough. Um, but I didn't because I feel comfortable enough with Mario. He's like a brother from another mother. So I feel like I can be like, no. And I know he uses templates for things like in Notion or, you know, like, but I told him and he asked me. And instead of just blurting out an answer, I said, 
I said, I don't know. And then I thought about it and I was like, oh, I do know. They're overwhelming to me. And I don't, then I feel like there's all these buttons, there's all these things, and I don't know which lever to push or button to pull or whatever, you know, that button to pull. I see, I don't even, it's a lever to pull, a button to push. And I feel overwhelmed. And I think maybe that ADHD brain possibly, but it's just, that's just the way my brain works. Whether you have ADHD or not, it just, everybody's brain works differently. It didn't feel like a catapult forward. It actually right. uh, puts blockers up and makes me not want to do it. And so I've done my taxes by hand. Yes, I use a calculator, but you have all these receipts, people. It's not like you're at the checkout line. You're like, let me go ahead and put this into my notion form, right? Nobody's doing that, right? You still have receipts. So it's not some that. Some people are. Yeah, yeah, some people are that good. That is not me, clearly. But my goal is just to do it every week or every month and get things in a more, but putting it online so I don't have to add it up you know, as, so it can add it up. So, which this is a good tool. I can do that. Um, but I realized that it was just too much. And I do, I actually start lots of things like this. And I thought, oh, you know, even like as I teach a class or if you're creating a course or you, we have these things that are like our go-tos things that will catapult Mario forward actually are, holding me back and they don't catapult me and I don't need to feel bad about it. And I actually don't feel bad about it. I don't think Mario's right. And I don't think I'm right. I'm just thinking Mario's right for Mario and I'm right for me. And so to me, I thought that was a really, um, it stuck with me. Clearly Mario was like, we're going to talk about what we're going to, I don't even know the story you're talking about, but it has stayed with me because I was, I was comfortable enough to say, no, I don't, want to do that. And I, he gave me enough time to think about what it was that makes me so uncomfortable with a template. And I just feel like I don't, I'm not smart enough. Uh, I don't, and I know I am, but it makes me, it puts the brakes on. And for you, it gives you extra nitrogen or nitrous oxide or whatever it is. Right. I think, yeah, I think from, if we want to go to, to kind of old, stories or or kind of like origin stories for ourselves like i'm i've always been the kid that <clears throat> has found the coolest thing and then broken it apart to figure out how it works right and then i'll put it back together mostly you know with all the parts and and make it better or or change it somehow so i've always been that kid so like my dad hated getting like really nice remote control cars for me and stuff like that. Cause I would like take stuff apart and put different batteries on it to make it go way faster and burn out the motors. So I was like, my thing's always been like, let me find something that's doing basically the job that I needed to do. And then I'm going to supercharge it. And so I realized that, that that's not the way everybody works. Right. And I understand like, you know, talking to Diane, um, my process is different because I'm looking for, I'm always looking for a quick solution that will get me what I need. And then I will knowing, knowing that I can mess with things. I know, I know enough tech stuff to get me very much in trouble. And so I I'll, I'll, I'll look at stuff. I'll look at the math. I'll look at how everything works. I was doing this last night actually. And then I will, I will engineer it to do exactly what I want it to do, which is, which is like a, like a supercharged version of what it was before, but a template to Diane, right. You just become overwhelmed with all the stuff that you're just like, Oh, I don't know where to put stuff. I don't know what to do with this stuff. Even if there's a, even if there's a walkthrough like video, yeah. video on it and like, she just, she shuts down because she feels like if she didn't do it, and she doesn't know how to make it work, right? And I, and I, I think, I think what I was when I said, "Why do you always do this?" I was talking about like, and, and I wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't to be mean. I was no, just, no, no. I was very. I was very curious. Diane knows me enough to 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 know that. But I was very curious because I noticed that when she builds websites or when she does certain things in um, the tech space she always tries to build it from scratch, even though there's a thousand things out there that will do exactly what she needs immediately. 
um, she, she feels like she has to build it from the ground up because she, but, but it's because she wants to know how everything works together. Um, and it's her like curious nature, but also just her learning the way she learns. Doc had a great point. So he says, I struggle with templates as well. I struggle with understanding how it works like I do, but also feeling like I'm selling someone else's work as my own. Oh, yes, this can be really so for mo- web or motion templates, especially. But Doc, it, Doc made that hopscotch poster back there. And Doc is an amazing illustrator, amazing designer. And I would say, well, just, you know, I, now you know how to use things, I think, um, to get your life is going to be put in there by your illustration and your typography and your design, but the way it moves, you didn't design. But if somebody asked you, did you do this? You would probably say no. And it's just going to take a whole lot longer. I think, what do you think about that, Mario? As far as like ownership of, of final product or feeling <clears throat> guilty about using something uh, like, like uh, doc was saying. So we'll take this back to like early career for me. Okay. Right. I started in the web when the web was barely the web. Right. And you know, this beard makes me look a little older than I am, but I, I've been doing design for 25, 26 years. So 26 years now. And so when I started in design, um, I started on the internet with Disney.com and they only had like 500 employees at that time. And Disney's since turned into, you know, uh, thousands and thousands of employees, whatever. Um, But we were, I was around when the the first time when animated GIFs came around and we're like, oh, whoa, crazy, you know, pictures that kind of do have frames and stuff like that. And then I, I remember the day that JPEG was, was, was released, the, the JPEG compression algorithm thing. And we were like, whoa, photos look like photos now. That's crazy. And so our whole thing at that time was hack it together and make it different, right? And it was always like, okay, what do we have available? Let's make something new from that. And so I think of a lot of that stuff as... Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, there's, there's two, two ways I think about it. I'm never going to sell somebody's el- somebody else's stuff as my own because obviously I didn't make it, right? But I'm not doing that for, um, like, I don't, I don't do a lot of websites because, um, A, it's just not my, it's not my thing. I, I've designed websites for years and um, it just doesn't bring me a, a huge satisfaction at the end of the day, right? I can do it. I just don't like it. Um, but if I were to design a website, and I were, to, I were to have a client and they're like, oh, we can only spend this much. I'm like, okay, well, what we're going to do is we're just going to buy a template and we're going to fulfill it. And so like, I'm already telling them, we're going to buy a template and then I'll modify it for you. So I don't, I don't pass anything off of that. That's not mine. Um, uh, but that, but if, you, if you think about it, like everything that we do as designers and, and, and creative people we take what we see or we find, we create something new with it. And that transition process in my mind is way more than enough to, to call it my own, whatever, really whatever it is, right? So in that, in that instance, I would, I would change enough of everything to make it my own. This is my design. I may have started with a template, but this is my design. Right. Um, and then the other part of it is when I start with a template, what I'm able to do is, again, I reverse engineer everything. So I know exactly how everything works. And then from that, from that framework of how everything works, I can create new things with the process of the, how it works. So I'm not just taking the template and just, just handing it over. I'm taking the process of the template. I'm looking at it. I'm deconstructing it. And then I'm creating new and different things with the process that I learned of how that template's working or, or whatever it is, right. It it could be, could be a a math thing from, from, you know, Google forms or whatever. Um, So I I hope that answers your question. Does that that make sense? Yeah, I think so. So I'm, I'm going to give another example of template. So um, lots of houses are the same. I know Paul lives in a, 
in an old, old house. It's beautiful. He's taken me on a tour. I mean, an internet Zoom tour, but it's awesome. And um, and I know lots That's of cool. houses are built the same. You know, they have like, there, there are like, uh, there were sort of templates. You can have house A, house B, or house C, right? And then, so there's very standard things. We kind of know what's behind the store because a lot of houses are built sim- similarly. But once you start putting your stuff in there and deciding how to decorate it, it becomes yours. Whoever lives in Paul's house after Paul will make it not like Paul. They won't be like, oh, this is Paul's house still. You know, it. they're not going to have all of Paul's stuff, right? I kind of think that we do make it. We can adjust it. But I think what I wouldn't do that Mario does is break it apart to see how it works. I actually need to start from building it from... Um, from zero to to know how it works because I'm uh, just built differently. Um, I don't know if the house thing was a good analogy or not, but I do understand about it feeling wrong. And I agree. Paul said it sort of feels wrong if it's not mine. Um, but here's where I, for so many years, I would have never illustrated anything. And I would have always bought illustration or I would have hired an illustrator. I would have never said it was mine. I would have been like, oh, well, I hired Doc Reed is going to do the illustration and this is this. So then this becomes a collaboration. Same thing with you, Mario, when you said, hey, if a client doesn't have a lot of money, we're going to just do a template because you don't have probably the, the time for something or they don't have the funds for something completely custom. So you're trying to give them to get them to their end goal of whatever it is, a brochure or a website or whatever. Um, But if they needed illustration, you know that's going to be something you could do, but Doc could probably do faster. You're never going to come across and be like, oh, yes, I did this and you didn't do it. Doc did it. Doc did the illustration. You did the design. So I think some of that is just... um, saying that, being able to say that. I also think there are some times where you have created a template yourself. So I do this in web design. I have certain, I don't know, it's like a flex box now, like a container or a row. Mom, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just like a row on the way. I just have a blank row that I repeat and it's a template. So I've made my own template for my clients. I've made my own template for me and I've made like my starter template that has like my headings, you know, H1, H2, H3. So I can see what a paragraph looks like. I So I can kind of start. So I'm not starting from scratch, but I made it myself. Are there some out there? Absolutely. I'm sure I could have found one for free, but that takes more time than it was for me to just build it myself. But I've made my own template. I think it's what we put into it. It's the words we put into an email template. It's the images we put into an email template, um, if you're using somebody else's words, then it's not really authentic or coming from you. Um, In the same way with like a template, a Canva template, uh, Pridge says templates have become so pervasive. Absolutely. We provide campaigns in Canva. My Emma templates are far, so, so far are custom. I have more of a problem with the 500 plus people I that that you she works with at a university um, using them poorly and in the end result is terrible. My sense is that they also consider themselves designers with no experience or education. And I had a conversation. I can't remember who I was talking to about this. I think it was just so, some of my design friends this week. And we were saying, you know, people will say, oh, well, can you teach me? Can you just go ahead and teach me how to use your InDesign? Or, you know, can you just teach me? And I'm like, um, you know, I could try, but you know, I went to five years of school for this and I've had 25 years of knowledge of using this every day. Um, it's not just so easy. And I also want to just say, Oh, are you a do you have a computer? And if they say yes, I'm like, Oh, do you have a keyboard? And if they say yes, I'm like, Oh, so you're a writer? How many books have you written? That's what I want to say, because it's like, oh, you have the tool, then you must be a writer or you must be something else. Right. Um, But this is just a tool. What we have, what we can do, what we can design, what Doc can do isn't what's easy for Mario isn't easy for me um, with branding or, or in strategy or content creation. But there are other things that I'm good at. And um, anyway, I don't know where I'm going. The end. (laughs) 
I'm going to pose this question to everybody. And it's a, it's a, it's a now kind of pseudo famous uh, illustration that, that someone gave, but um, in school, this instructor, right? <clears throat> this instructor came to uh, another instructor and said, Oh my gosh, like I just found out that one of my students um, paid a designer to do, to do the work and they handed it in um, as their finished piece. And the other, and <clears throat> the other instructor said, uh, wow, that's really, that's really, that, that's really kind of ingenious. And the instructor that was um, kind of appalled, they're like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, as a creative director, that's what we do, right? And, he's, and, and his point was, are we training our, are we training these kids to get the job done? Or are we training them to do it themselves? What's, wh what are we training them to do? And so there's a different, there's a disparity of, of what the end goal is. Right. And so Chris did give that example. And it was, it was a, it was a person at, at art center. And Chris said, if, if I, if that person was in my class, I would have given them an A plus. And and the reason was because he's like, he's like, I want someone who can gather the pieces, art direct, creative direct, make it all happen and make it, make it exactly what they need it to be. He's like, that kind of thinking is way more valuable to me than a designer who spends mindless hours and gets it almost kind of there. Right. And so the, the, the point I'm making is like, Everybody, everybody's got a different process for, for where they are and in the, in the chain of the final piece, right? Um, does Diane putting a website together with docs illustrations and, and this person's design over here and, and, you know, and yeah, maybe, maybe a lot of the structure of the website was hers, but the final piece was actually an amalgamation of a lot of different people and, and pieces, but she was in charge of creating directed. Uh, she, she was in charge of creative directing it, art directing, making sure all the pieces she's producing it, and, right? So at the end of the day, that is her work 100% because she put all the pieces together. No one else did that. So her mind was able to do that, right? And so as a creative director, and I've been a creative director for a long time, my job is always to train up designers, make them, help them think better, and then put all the pieces together from words to emotion to di design to imagery to structure and make it a cohesive piece. And that's, that's always been my job. So that's why I think of, I, I can think of process and, and templates in a different way because I'm always thinking of a much bigger picture. How can I get the desired result the quickest and the most efficient as I can um, with using as many pieces that are available to me or even people that are available to me that can do exactly what I need them to do. All right. So, um, yeah, so that, that was just, that was just something that was coming to my mind as, as I was, as I was listening to you. Well, I think in doc says the training to be an art director was only developed after leaving school. The focus in school was all on the craft. I would have failed the kid who paid the per if, unless that was right. part of the thing they have to show that they can do it. But but that is something to think about. And I think Mario and I, didn't we talk about, I don't remember. Anyway, clearly I have a lot of conversations with you in my head and you're not there. So, <laughs> uh, but we were talking, I think about, um, uh, anyway, I can't remember. It just went away. <clears throat> um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go on to what Dustin said. Dustin says, isn't everything built on a template in a way? Um, what do you think to that? I don't think so. I don't think everything's built on a template, but as we move forward in time, so many people are producing so many things, right? There's nothing new under the sun, right? There's really nothing new. Like there's only a certain amount of story arcs that can actually possibly be, be created because they've all been created already. Right. And so, you, you have to understand, like, um, not everything is probably a template, but isn't the gathering of multiple things together a new thing? Mm -hmm. And that's the way I think about it, right? So it's like, how can I create something new out of, 
out of everything that I have available to me. And that's, that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to constantly create and move forward, creating new things. And if it's something that I feel like I can create by myself, awesome. Right. But at this point, I'm looking for efficiency and execution and excellence that, um, that I want to happen faster. Right. Then, then, for me, like, like, oh, okay, I have to create, now I have to create a whole new template. This has to look different than my other clients. I won't use anything that I've created before. Like I just, I just piled on years of work onto myself. And basically I'm saying, forget what you know and do it all from scratch. Mm. And for me, that, that puts me back. That, that makes me, that makes me unthink things and kind of, it, it retards my, my moving forward because I'm not able to look at everything that's available and utilize the, the knowledge and things that people have brought to the table before me and step on that and move forward from there. I'm actually climbing down a mountain and saying, okay, well, I know I've, walked, I'm, I know I've, I've climbed this mountain a few different ways. I'm going to climb it this way now and see if I, if I can get there the same way, but I'm like actually making more work for myself. So for me, it doesn't make sense. Well, it's also like if you're climbing the mountain and the next time you put on a different kind of shoes and then every time, if you're really trying to be efficient and effective with your client, if you're always doing something new, then how do you know if it's going to work? So there is some things, but it's not like every single one of your client uses the same typeface or the same. That's not what we're talking about, but it's that there is a system and you're really good at creating systems. You're really good at creating frameworks that all have spelled out words together. I am not good at that. He'll be like, it's team. Let's, it's the T and the E and the A and the M, whatever. I don't remember. Mario has all these, like they're always, it always makes some sort of name. I remember what it was that we were talking about. We were talking about my seniors. I think, I think he has a, there's a rooster over there. Um, Did you know that also chickens will crow if they're, if there's not a male with them, they'll be like, they try to crow. My had one. And she, I would be like, oh, girl, you can keep trying, but you don't have the lungs that that rooster does. So it could be okay. a chicken. Keep tracking. What were you saying before yeah. the rooster? Okay. So it was about the, um, um, the school project. And we had talked about, like, what did, what was I trying to get them to do? And what were the learning objectives? And, right. um, like, building a portfolio or whatever. And I said, it's also about learning to work in a team. And he said when he was in school, Mario said when he was in school, he there was a project where they actually had to come up with something. And then each person had a something to design and they all had to contribute. So they had to say, hey, you're going to make this illustration for me and you're going to do this for me. And then you had to put it into something. And they did awesome. And it was really amazing. And I think that if we did have something like that in school, that Doc was saying, I didn't have any art direction. I didn't have any creative direction. Um, If we had more of that, I think that that might help us get to a better place in, as we start um, a job. But I also feel like there's so much to learn that it's like, I don't think as a professor, we don't really talk about that part. We barely talk about the business side sometimes. And so there's, it's kind of like, well, let's just throw something up and try to do it. I think with art direction in school, it can be a little sticky, you know, because it would be like, oh, well, Mario, he likes the impact, you know, like that typeface. I don't, I don't know if you really like that typeface, but, you know, you'd be like, oh, man, I do not want to have impact in my portfolio, you know, and then kids get um, sensitive, I guess, to what somebody else did. Doc made this thing and. Now this is, you know, I mean, I don't, they, in my classes, they can't do any illustration if they didn't do it themselves. They can't buy an illustration and put it in because it is when they go out into the world, they're usually not saying, um, (laughs) Doc Reed says one of his first projects was using impact. My mom's like, what is this impact? It's this really, I know you've seen the typeface, mom. I think it's pretty terrible. I'm, I'll, Pointed out to you, and I'll send you something in impact um, later today. <clears throat> I mean, it's just overused. The end. It, it's an old, it's an old typist. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the things I, I think 
going back to what your 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 illustration with your, with your class was like we need to assess like what's the obje- objective is the objective for me to do everything or to get my project done for my client that's 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 what the that for me like i'm always trying to think of what's the best way i can service my client and is the best way me illustrating everything and and doing every tiny thing because that would take years of work right? right or is the best way to source all the best stuff for my client that that they can that they can afford and bring it all together in a much new and refreshing way i think that's my job right, right. and so in school we aren't teaching well, it depends on what you're, you're in school for are you in school to learn how to be an illustrator okay then why would you buy illustration? That's, that's, that's kind of counterintuitive. If you're learning how to do a craft, there's different sides to art school, right? Learning right. how to do the craft and be the craft maker, right? But then there's also the other side of like uh, art direction. Like, are you learning how to direct the craft and, and combine the elements to make something amazing, right? I think we, 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 we convolute and we make things a little gray there or we think, hey, designers, you have to do everything. That's actually not true. We're, I think we're, we're, we're hamstringing them, right? In school, if you're learning design, yeah, of course, like you have to do your typography if you're in a typography class. But if the class is to art direct something mm-hmm. and the class is about art direction, then isn't it even more maybe... Um, isn't even more impressive that someone actually took initiative and paid people to bring the best things together and art direct and actually art direct a piece when everybody else is actually just designing. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I think that I don't, I know that every kid doesn't have a camera. Every kid isn't great with a, with photography. They do have to have a photography component in one of these projects, I didn't say that they had to take the photo, but they can't use a mock-up because I want them to art direct. But like one of my kids, Lauren, she's a great photographer. I'm like, I didn't say y'all couldn't pay Lauren to shoot your photos, but you better be there art directing it. Don't let Lauren art direct it. She just knows how to use the camera better and can get down or do things. And she has the equipment and she understands how to use it better than maybe somebody does. But Dustin has a great point. If he had hired Clark Orr, who's a great designer, to design something for him, or like Doc Reed, and he hired Clark because he wanted Clark's design. Um, if he, if Dustin's saying he would be, he wouldn't feel like he was getting what he paid for if Clark had um, not done it for him. And I think that that this is can be a real squirrely area. But this is when, if it's the Clark or Design Company, I don't think that's the name of his company because I think his wife or a girl used to work with him. Anyway, I don't know if it was his wife or not, but whatever. But if I was, t- if I had done the design, I've, I've created the first three things. So when I run camp, I have over 150 social media things. I do not do all of them. I create three kind of templates that I want for each of the different, or maybe it was five templates or seven templates. And then every single speaker, it's kind of like, oh, you put the speaker's head here, you get the text from here and you make some typography in the same way that I've already done it. I've created a template of sorts, a style guide. And then the other people, I do it for one person. And then the, the, People who work for me do all the rest. If it doesn't look like me, then I'm tweak. I'm saying, hey, go change this. This needs to adjust because I'm art directing. I'm not necessarily doing that. I still think is me, even though I didn't physically make the the Mario one. Right. But they look enough like the one I did make. So I would say that one was me. And if Clark or has somebody who he has trained to build it then he has done a good job of replicating himself so he can scale his company. But if 
if it was a custom illustration, which it may be with Clark, um, then yeah, you hope that it's Clark or again, especially with fine art, there are lots of, what do you call those people that work for the artist that are in training? Um, I forget. Anyway, you know, it's like old assistants. (laughs) No, apprentice. Yeah, oh, yes, yes, yeah. apprentices. So, but but I think like Da Vinci was an apprentice for someone else, right? Michelangelo, and I know like we think that just happens in old olden days. Um, like when my mom was a kid. Just kidding, mom. I'm just kidding. That was supposed to be funny. Um, she's not that old. Um, but it was like there's a Dave Chihuly. He's a glass artist. He doesn't really blow a lot of his own. Uh, stuff anymore he he might make one and then he has other people that are making it but it's still a Dave Chihuly because they work for him and he has taught them how to do it there is controversy in this in the art world there's controversy in this possibly I guess as designers as well Um, but that's how people learn to to make things that was the apprenticeship was something like that yeah I mean and it's like Going back to the illustration um, example, Dale. <clears throat> you have to you have to ask yourself like, am I paying for his style, or am I paying for him to actually put the pen to the paper? And for me, that's a different, that's a vastly different thing, right? So if Clark Orr is the the master he is, if you're playing paying for a Clark Orr style, that's one price. If you're paying for Clark Orr to put your pet to put his pen to, to create an original piece, that's going to be skyrocket a totally different atmosphere price. You know, we talk about you know you know you know Von Glitschka. Von Von was just on this, right? Is, is he has his Glitschka design studio, right? People go to that because of the style, but he doesn't do everything. His daughter does a lot of work, and they have other people that do stuff in the style that Vaughn has created, right? They're not going to do something in their own style because that's not what they're buying. So it's a stylistic thing. There's a photographer years ago that she was made famous for taking perfect photos of other famous photos. So her photo, it was, it was her photo, right? Let's talk about, let's talk about like gray area, an original photo, right? This is not digital area, right? Era an original photo, she would go and she would light and she would make everything perfect so that her photo looked basically exactly like the original, but it was her. So she was able to sign it, right? Because she, she, she made that photo. That was, that's her photo Mm -hmm. of another photo, right? So there's, there, there is a gray area. That might be copyright infringement. I mean, it might, but it, but it's not because it was her photo. It's a photo of someone else's photo. Right. And the way she, and the way she got around it, I think she's like, she signed it, you know, like um, her name after the original artist. Right. But it was, but it's her photo. Like she has the negative. That's her photo. Yeah. But I could type up a book that was already written. Well, I typed it. I got the file and I mean, you can't explain that. That's, that's, that's different. It's different because it would be it, it would be different. It would be the same thing if you took a photo of the book of each page and you sold a photo book of the book with your photos in it because the, every page is your photo of the other book. That's what that's what it is because it's an image, right? It's not the words; it's the image of the words. Right. Right. I didn't come up. I didn't come up with the words. I didn't write this book. I photographed. This is my photo book of you know a tale of two cities or whatever. Right. right. So that, that would be a, that would be the same thing. Right. Um, because I, you're not. You, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to, I think people should contact. <clears throat> we are not copyright attorneys. You should contact a copyright attorney for the copyright part. We're just having a discussion. Can we get back a little bit to process? So sure. in this, in this Dale Chihuly, I said, Dave, but it's not Dave. So what do you think if, I agreed, like you were saying with Clark Orr, if you wanted Dale Chihuly to actually make it, it's still considered a Dale Chihuly because it was his, um, it's his shape of a bowl, 
or whatever, but he didn't blow mm-hmm. it. He didn't, um, in glass blowing, I don't know if y'all know, we have a glass blowing facility. So we have kids that are learning glass blowing. So it's a two, it's a team. You have to have two people. Somebody is spinning and blowing while you're pinching and doing whatever it you. So it's like, well, it was Mario's air in my hands, you know, but Mario would be like, well, you couldn't have done it without me. But Mario doesn't get to put his name on my bowl that I made because I'm art directing. Now blow here, put it back in the heat, turn it, keep turning, turn faster or um, put that down in the whatever frit that's glass powdery stuff. Um, And I think in a way there is something it doesn't feel like if I was making, if I wanted Dale Chihuly to make my bowl or my lamp or whatever, I know it would cost a whole lot more. So this is like a cheaper, a minimum viable product or something, right? This is your cheaper price maybe. But I also think if he's done a really good job, he's still saying it's his it's still his design. It's still his art. He is still making it. And those people who work for him, they get paid, but they're not doing their original art. They're doing Dale's art. Right. Right. So they, they're, they're being apprenticed to learn how to do the master's work. Right. And so they're being paid to do the master's work. Right. And so if in that instance, you know that it could have been 50 different people that made whatever the thing is, but what you wanted was the thing you got. So does that make it less, does that make it less valuable to you if it's exactly what you wanted and it came from the place that you wanted it to be from? And originally it came from the mind that you paid that has the name on the piece that, that you bought the, the thing from. Does, it, does that make it less valuable to you? I'm asking you. Like, oh, I no, I so. don't. I don't think so either. And I, I'm just kind of thinking about the, if if we're talking about people using templates for a menu or something, it is a cheap, It is you're not getting an original design. There will be multiple people who have the same menu and they've just put their, their stuff in there. It's not the custom stuff. We were talking, Amy Lynn uh, came and did a little, a, lecture for my students about she's in the wine industry. She does wine packaging, wine logos. And um, she was saying, so I made my students do a word mark that was, so just words, no, um, no no element, no icon, because oftentimes a wine, a winery wouldn't have a, sometimes they don't have like a fancy logo that has a mark and a word so i was like oh to make it easier let's just do a word mark but it can't just be like do 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 i typed it out in impact sweet design mario you know i love that impact or hobo or something else that i hate you know but it has to be about um it has i think you have to adjust something you have to change something you have to make something custom so in a way all of us who aren't building our own type or aren't printing our own things, are we all just using the, these are templates or tools? Um, I also think it's, I'm happy to make some of my templates and to uh, put some of those things out there, but really they're just really for me to help my process get faster. I, I do want to, um, I, I know there's a whole other thing going on in the chat that I haven't read and it's uh, Dustin and Paul and everybody's talking about the more of the art side, but I wanted to talk about our processes as, because I don't think anybody cares if I use a notion template or if I made my own for my taxes, right? Nobody, nobody really, nobody, I'm not selling that Lord knows. And it's, it's a grid, you know, I just wanted to make sure it would work. Um, But if there are things that will help us, I don't have to make all the brushes I use. I just buy mine from retro supply, right? And I can absolutely know that I know I could make it, but I don't want to make it. Dustin's already made it. It's so much faster. I'm just going to go there. But in this, Mario, you've taken lots of classes. You've, I've taken lots of classes. Uh, You've read lots of books. I've read lots of books. We've, you've tried out lots of things, things when you're doing strategy with people. 
um, you decide you're not just following Marty Neumeyer A to Z. You are you you have learned, and then you're taking and you're seeing what each client. There's that customization. That's us. You really building each letter right because that's what it requires when you go in for strategy or do the design. If somebody can afford that, it is awesome if we can do that. That's the kind of designer I want to be. But there are definitely some of my clients, especially in the beginning of my business, um, I didn't use templates. There weren't as templates out there, I don't think. Um, But I always did feel like I had to make everything from scratch and I couldn't even use the same thing that I had used for them before. I felt like I always had to keep making it and it wasn't efficient for me and it wasn't efficient for them and it maybe wasn't as much um, cohesive branding in the beginning of my career but for you can you just talk a little bit about your learning and then how you decide what you use and how the process might be different for every client Um, are you talking about in a strategy sense or yeah on the strategy side yeah because you could follow someone a to z correct yeah, and, and I think one of the things that, that you learn as a as a designer, and a designer is just a problem solver, is is to that every problem isn't the same, right? Every every client doesn't have the same problem. They may have a similar problem, like of exposure or or they need more sales or or whatever there that is, or they need a new brand. They may have a similar problem, but but the way we go about it is 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 going to be probably different right for everybody <clears throat> and so i think what dan's talking about is you know as we as we acquire tools and this goes back to my like art direction example right i'm going to look at what's out there and i'm going to use what's best for my client so as i read as i as i grow in my knowledge as i grow in my my, my understanding of strategy how to do it what's best as i do strategy for each client i'm realizing that wow I could use Marty's, you know, I am framework, POV framework, right? I could use that. Or I could use, um, you know, the, the thing that the future sells, or I could, I could, I could use, um, you know, someone else's thing, or I could use, you know, I could focus on the way um, Melinda does it or like, or Stephen Hurahan does it or whatever. And, but the, at the end of the day, I'm like, well, what's going to serve my client best? And the only one that's going to know what, what's going to serve my client best is me, right? Because they're my client. And so I'm going to realize like, oh, actually, you don't need all this other stuff. You really just need this, this, and this. So let's get you really great this, this thing, this thing, and this thing. Let's define that really well so that you can go out, feel confident, and, and, and have a brand that you're proud of. So really, we acquire tools but we're not going to use every tool we have for everything we do. Right. Right. My, one of my, I I believe one of my strengths is seeing what tools I need, but also even more importantly, seeing what tools I don't need. Like I don't need to do all this stuff and, and, and spend two hours like digging into this and this and that, because you actually are just a startup mom and pop, you know, taco shop or whatever it is, I'm like you don't need me to go in that deep for your for your company because your company A is not that deep and B, you don't need that right now. Maybe right. after you become a multi-million dollar company restaurant chain in the future, yeah, we can go a deep diver because there's a lot more nuanced things that we have to consider. But for you right now, what what are the things that I know can get you what you absolutely need? right now to move you forward in the fastest, most efficient way possible. And I think we need to do that more with our clients, right? And so going back to the process and template idea, what I look at is what are the things that I know? What are the things that they need? And how can I bridge that gap as fast as possible Mm -hmm. for them, right? Yeah. There's this, there's this, there's this thing I read recently. It's like the, the distance between our clients paying us and them actually seeing results from all the work that we're doing, that distance is the value. Mm. So the shorter the, di- the shorter the distance, the more massive the value. So in a, in a, in a utopian world, as if, if I'm providing a service 
and someone buys something from me and swipes their credit card, as soon as that credit card is swiped, their life should be different, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's how fast, like, like it's instant value. Man, I'm going to give you $500,000 and I'm going to have $2 million of value, right? So think about that. The distance between your, your client paying you and the value they see from what you do for them, not the design, not the product, not what you give them, but the value that they obtain on their business from what they get, what you give them. That's the value. And that distance of time, that, that, that measures the value, right? If it takes two years for my client to see any movement on their brand because of, because it, a, it took me a long time because I had to start from scratch or B, um, they, I just didn't give them a, a good enough plan to make that thing worthwhile for them until two years, then the value is actually very minimal, right? But if I shorten that to two months and I give them crazy value in two months and they're already skyrocketing after two months after we complete our project and I give them a good plan, then that's a lot of value in a short amount of time. Does that make sense? Yeah. I do think there's something, there's something about walking with people because I think some of my students would be like, this is not valuable and they need the time after, right? They need, they come back later. I had somebody yesterday text me and it's like, I need another one of these. And he was talking about one of my students who's an alumni. He's like, I need a duplicate of Marcus. He's awesome. I need another one. I was like, okay. And he was a student of mine as well. And he's like, you teach them. Um, these are things that I know that these are things that you teach them in school. And so that's a kid who I had in 2004. Marcus, I had in 2020. And it's like, but Marcus hadn't come back and said anything. So it's a lot of this. There's a lot of learning that maybe is painful. I think you raising your kids, it's all this stuff. There's value in all the time you're putting in with your kids. And you don't necessarily, you Maybe it maybe it's different because it's a child that's not a return on investment. Hopefully, <laughs> um, but but you're investing this time in there. But this with a client as well. So there's somebody who's going. You're going to be there with them in these, you know, valleys and these peaks through their. I don't know. Uh, the thing is, is that you can see what to use with each different client, and you're not going to just go through the same frame or all four hours of something just because that's what you do with everybody. You're going to actually, that's, that's experience tells you what's going to work and what's not because you have done this over and over. I had a kid, I used to give all the questions that I might ask in an interview or not an interview interview like this, but when I do an intake, like with a client for the first time and um, I had, I would give it to my students and I said, here's some questions, you know, and I may, I know when to move quickly or I kind of know what the answer is so I can answer some of it on my own. I don't need all these answers, but it's my sheet. I've worked through it. So I remember I had a kid who went over to um, the theater department and me and my friend Lars was like, man, he took like an hour and a half of my time and went through all these questions. I was like, oh man, those are my questions. It was like, I didn't need to answer all these questions. It's just a poster for some Shakespeare play, you know, like I just need a poster, buddy. You know, you don't need, and it's, it's that the kid didn't know it. He didn't have the experience to know. So he went through one through 40 of all the questions, but I would have known, hey, I only need this. I don't need everything because I can get some of this just from other things that I'm able to take in and do research on my own or, but it, that's the experience part, I think. Anyway, I just think it's, it's, we discount the failures of when we see somebody and they're like, oh, I got to go or right that, that part of that process that you might be learned once and now you know to look out for this or if they're not getting it like you're like okay pivoting going to a new tool because they don't they're not understanding what i'm asking i think the strength of doing this over and over and over and over again whatever that is your craft right is actually the education you get from doing it over and over and over again right it's that experiential knowledge not just education it's not just book knowledge 
um, the experiential knowledge of actually doing strategy or design or art direction or illustration, or whatever, <clears throat> you know what is going to happen if you mix these two colors together. Whereas someone else who's mm. new doesn't know what's going to happen. So their, their, their stuff looks terrible where at using the same colors as when in stark contrast to your stuff that might look amazing because you know how to use those two things together in that. And you have the same tools. You just have a different set of knowledge, right? Mm. So it's really about understanding what you know and continuing to grow in that knowledge so that you can provide this, the, the, the best possible service to your clients. Um, but also so that you can, you can be, more efficient in your own work and your life. I do things my way. Diane does things her way, you know, and it's just because the work we're, we're built different and my journey, my experiential knowledge is different than Diane's experiential knowledge. And it causes us to have different processes, but you know, it's really at the end of the day, it's really about servicing our clients and, and doing, doing the best possible work possible. Yeah. And I love the thing about value. So the shortest time to that value I think that that's, um, I'm going to have to think on that. That'll be other conversations I have with you when you're not there in my, in my <laughs> head. I'll tell you about those on Friday. Uh, but All right. uh, guys, I'm excited to have uh, Sandy Hester. I've talked to y'all about her for, I don't know, ever since I've been back. She um, is an artist. Uh, so artist, artist, not a designer, never a designer. Um, she's a painter. And I didn't know her, but she did go to Auburn or Eagle. And um, that's our battle cry. Um, anyway, anyway, I'm super excited to have Sandy. She is going to talk to us about process again. And she goes out and draws and paints and th- in her sketchbooks. And then she comes back and makes these big, amazing paintings. And some, And it's the process of making the same thing over and over which is kind of what we're talking about here about being able to know and experience. She'll make trees that are purple and she used to hate using purple. So it's like, Oh, I don't have anything good. I'll just use the purple. And then she's found something else or a new tool or a new way to use a tool. And it's also about being loose. And she was really tight as an artist, like again, making it photographic, you know, and then being able to embrace what she wants and how she feels is right for her um, and she knows it's not for everybody. And I'm sure that she gets hated on, like s- somebody tells her maybe that she doesn't know how to draw. Sometimes I'm sure somebody would tell me that as well. Uh, but it's, she is, I love her art. I love her. She is quirky and crazy. And we both have the same, these glasses we, we both have and my blue glasses. So hopefully she'll wear her blue glasses. My husband calls the blue blockers. So um, I hope to see you guys next week. I can't wait. And thanks for coming and staying. And I uh, am and um thanks for all the new people that came. You can always come just go to rechargingyou.com slash sign up if you're listening to this or um watching this on YouTube. You can always go there, the links down below. And if you want to know how to get more, if you want to learn more about Mario, you can get him. You tell him because you have to say your last name again. I'll just type it in the chat. <laughs> uh easiest way is to connect with me on Instagram. It's just at the Mario Quesada, Q-U-E-Z-A-D-A. Uh, you can also go to madexmaker.com. That's more of just my, my agency work. Uh, if you guys are interested in the photographer that I was referencing, her name is Cindy Sherman. Um, and she was, she was kind of, she was definitely uh, a, a polarizing person um, when she came, came on the scene. So it's really interesting. It's an interesting read about her. What's her, how do you spell that? Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, Sherman. I thought you said something else. M-A-N. Okay, I do remember her. I thought you said I Seely or something. Anyway, I just didn't hear well because I only have one of my earbuds works. The other one doesn't. Anyway, I've got to type made by maker real quick. Made Okay, now you can get to Mario there. And, oh, I want one other thing. We're doing blobs. Hang on. Okay, so this is week one. 
you guys could do it with me. Mine is at home. I've already done. I had two just in case I was worried I was going to mess something up. So I just printed out two for each. But you guys can go to rechargingyou.com slash imagine ember. And if you don't know what that is, it's like imagine and then e or, or imagine M B E R like November or December, but imagine ember. And then you can do it with us. And Paul's done some. Um, we've gotten kayaks already and people and I did a jalapeno and somebody did a fun banana. So um, join us and just put imagine ember in the in your hashtag and tag me in it. And it's it's been fun. So hopefully we're only on week one. You can jump in anytime. So if you're watching this and it's 2085, jump on in. I'm sure I'm dead, but feel free. Jump on in. Okay, the end. The end.